You make a lot of mistakes and missteps and waste of time and money and resources. Even if you're trusting your intuition, having someone who is seasoned, who has been there, that has worked with other businesses before and seen those same mistakes, helping you avoid them. I think having that guide, shepherd, whatever you want to call it along the journey from the earliest point forward is something I wish I would have had and given myself. Welcome to the Never Been Promoted podcast and YouTube channel. I'm on a mission to help you cut the tie to all the things that are holding you back so you can unleash your entrepreneur. Today, we're joined by Chase Friedman. Mr. Friedman, introduce yourself. Mr. Friedman to you. Chase Friedman or Chase to anybody else. Brand strategist and founder of Vanquish Media Group. Find theirs in their life and in their business. So I work with empowering purpose-driven brands to unlock that passion, that purpose, that clarity to make a lasting impact in their business and the lives of their customers, their communities, the world at large. And in best cases, I believe that every business has the ability to achieve that great balance between profit and purpose, right? To do good and do well. Give us a little history of kind of like how you got to here, but tackle that first of day one brand. You know, how do you do it as an entrepreneur? Yeah, look, you got to ask some tough questions. You got to be willing to get vulnerable. A lot of entrepreneurs, like you said, just kind of, like, kind of bull right in. We've got to go to market plan. We've got to hit certain targets and growth, growth, growth at all costs. But stop and kind of pump the brakes a little bit. Measure twice, cut once. Ask yourself why. Why am I doing this? What do I believe in? Why do we? Why do I, we, the business exist beyond the bottom line? The reason that is more important now than ever before is we're living in this kind of more socially conscious sort of consumer environment, right? And there is more competition and there are more options for consumers to do business with than ever before. So how do you stand out in the sea of sameness, okay? I understand that you might have a unique positioning for your product or price point or service, but all that stuff kind of still gets lost in consumers' minds that are searching for a deeper identity. So as an entrepreneur, the exciting thing is the business should be a reflection of you, right? You gotta do a little personal development to get to that professional development. So really wearing on your sleeve the values you stand behind why you are in business, what you stand for, and making sure that's front and center and part of your messaging. And that is very quickly going to attract your tribe, that audience, whether it's consumers or even employees or investors, to want to do business with you because of what you stand for, what you mean, not just the features and benefits your product or service offers. Anyone can do that. That's a quick race to the bottom line in terms of price. So starting with asking yourself why you are unique or what you believe, how you are uniquely delivering upon that and then get to the what it is i actually do as a business as an entrepreneur and talk to me about creating a brand and around a niche that is it's good enough but how do you get a customer who doesn't want to go that route so talk about that i think it's difficult and everyone is a little bit hesitant to kind of niche down if you will but even beyond niche you know niche i look at it as okay great you're going to occupy a smaller or niche category within an existing segment or category I think there's a little bit more of a broader kind of perspective now that we consider to be category positioning, right? Category, find an entirely new category or blend of what you do and how you do it that is completely blue blue sky or blue ocean, right? So you're really developing and defining your own market unto yourself. You're becoming instantly a market leader versus constantly trying to bite off a smaller piece of the pie when there's already established one or two market leaders. If you're not in that top rank, how did you get your company started and how'd you land in this space? I think it was a matter of being a little bit of a round peg in a square hole, working for previous companies, corporations, where I wasn't feeling fully fulfilled by the work that I was doing. I, a little bit of stubbornness perhaps, which I think a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, feel, hey, I can do a little bit better, right? Than what I'm seeing out there in the marketplace. I don't come from a branding and marketing background. I come from a filmmaking background, storytelling. And I always knew that I loved the ability of story to influence people's hearts and minds and emotions. And I think the same is whether you do it for film and TV or whether you do it for brands. And so taking that same methodology and that same uh, passion for storytelling into brands, really just beginning to, quite frankly, it was saying yes to a lot of different new projects I hadn't done before and learning as I go, very bootstrap grassroots sort of mentality to build my business, but very quickly learned that, you know, this is not rocket science. We need to simplify and clarify the messages businesses are telling to be able to better reach their customers. So that's kind of my path it was a little bit out of feeling the need to honor a greater purpose and a greater calling of what I wanted to do in the world. In your own journey, I always ask kind of as a form of this question of like, what's one like regret or something you wish you would have known? If you were talking back to yourself, 
someone's listening, they're like you, but they're backed up two, three years from now. What do you tell them? I wish I had more of a guide or a coach or a strategist the way I kind of serve and operate by my side along the way. I started my company as a solopreneur, didn't have a partner in it, right? And when you're doing that for the first time, there's a lot of guesswork. You make a lot of mistakes and missteps and waste of time and money and resources. Even if you're trusting your intuition, having someone who is seasoned, who has been there, that has worked with other businesses before and seen those same mistakes, helping you avoid them. I think having that guide, shepherd, whatever you want to call it along the journey from the earliest point forward is something I wish I would have had and given myself. But I think that's also why I love doing that for others today is, you know, I like helping people succeed beyond where they are, think they are capable or making connections that they don't clearly see for themselves. You need a, you know, whether you call it a coach or a consultant, you need a partner in the game to be even a sounding board for you as you go about this journey. Knowing that, what are you doing for the future then? So another kind of question I always ask is, you're at time zero once again, and, and you, I'm sure you realize that more so than you did when you first started. Cause, yeah. But what are you doing now, taking that advice for yourself? So I've got a few different sort of guides, coaches, therapists that I work with. I mean, honestly. It's the therapist, plural. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's like a whole- No wonder like, you need foster. revenue. You got a, you got a lot of <laughs> bills. It's you know. the, I mean, honestly, it's, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of, of uh, personal development and self growth. So uh, there's a lot of work that I need to do for myself, for my own mental health, my own sort of well being, to be a better husband, father, brother, son, you know, friend, because I do believe that builds a better foundation to be a better business leader and entrepreneur. So the personal growth is one area. And then the professional growth, working with a little bit of kind of a business coach that, again, I wouldn't call them your typical executive coach. It's someone that straddles the line between a little bit of soulfulness and spirituality. That's just my flavor. I believe in investing so much of my personal self into my business. And so you've got to find your dream team, if you will, that's going to help guide you along the way. Because otherwise, it can be pretty isolating and pretty lonely. What technologies are enabling your business right now? I think project management is one of the biggest things. You know, when you've got kind of a small but lean team, I think having organizations and systems to support that at scale is, is critical, right? Having standard operating procedures for how we onboard clients, how we deliver on different, you know, services and product and having kind of a master sort of my coordinator is amazing. What's a recommended business book? What's a must read? I'm a big fan of Marty Neumeyer. So I think, you know, in terms of branding and brand identity, he does a great job in disrupting kind of the expected or status quo. And he's one that says a brand is more than, it's not a logo, right? It's what your customer believes it to be. So Brand Gap is a, is a seminal book. Brand Zag is another great one about differentiation and disruption in kind of a crowded marketplace. I would check out Marty Neumeyer's stuff. He's kind of a bit of a guru and a godfather when it comes to brand strategy. What's the number one entrepreneurial trait people need? Or do you find them? I would say, what's the top trait that entrepreneurs have to have? If you're leading a team, you're a founder, your CEO, et cetera, I think empathy is big and being able to really just kind of empathize with your team, your people, your customers, and what they're feeling, what they're needing, and having an attunement to that to kind of be a better leader. But I would also say it's just in general, entrepreneur is listening. We all like to really just talk a lot and, ha- and feel that we need to have all of the answers, right? Every time for every situation. And that's really not the case. Mine, honestly, I'm going to quest to try to just ask better questions, more questions. And I think listening is absolutely key in terms of being able to have a more intimate conversation with somebody. You're not talking at somebody, you're talking with them. I believe that does build a lasting relationship. So listening is something that I think I and, and, and many of us need to be doing a better job at. That being said, here is the final question. Have you ever been promoted? The answer is no. And I think that's what led me to a path of entrepreneurship. Like, and I've never promoted myself. If anything, I've demoted myself.